I did a seminar one weekend up at the ranch, up at Clear Lake. Got a lodge up there. Nice setting, high valley, high serenity range. For the weekend, Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, people drove in from around California. I got there late Friday afternoon. Everybody had pretty well already gotten there. I couldn't believe the parking lot. Continentals and Eldorados, Mercedes, Cadillac, unbelievable. Ferrari, one Rolls Royce, unbelievable. I walked in, good looking crowd, about like this, sitting there ready for the weekend seminar. My opening remarks were, ladies and gentlemen, I think the rest of the world would find it strange that we have all come here this weekend to try to figure out how to do better. <laughs> I think the rest of the world would say, I don't understand. The guy in his Rolls Royce in. I gotta get to the seminar, find out how to get another one of these Rolls Royces. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's be thankful. Here's what locks up the doors and the channels to receive more cynicism. That locks you away. That prevents you from learning more. Being a cynic about the past and the future. Cynic about the marketplace. Cynical about people. Cynical about the institution. Cyn cynical about the setup. Cynical about yourself. Cynical about your chances. See, that locks away all the chance for stuff to flow your way. So, Good advice, I think, today. Start off, be thankful. Here's number two, listen well. That's going to be a challenge today, I understand that. Seems like most of, you know, our life is still going on outside these four walls, right? Most of our life seems like it's all, you know, continuing out there. Family and business and associates, market, economy, and whatever else is happening in the midst of your life. And to sort of, you know, pull your attention from what's going on out there and put it in here for just a few hours, I know, challenge. But do the best you can, listen well. Here's the last one. Take good notes. Be a good student today. Take some good notes. I've not come to entertain you, as you can tell by my opening joke, right? I would not make it in Las Vegas. So we don't have a dog and pony show today. No entertainment, but I do have some ideas. Take some good notes. Somebody showed me the other day notes they took about 21 years ago, attending one of my seminars out in Los Angeles. He said, I still use these notes I took 21 years ago to help me in my business relationship with my fans. So I'd like to have these notes take they come that value. Then it would be worth me making the invest, come and spend portion of my lifetime, the energy. And I want this investment I'm making here today to pay off. And one of the ways to pay off me for you to take good notes and then go away and use whatever makes sense. Because what I feast on coming back around is the story out of this audience today. Sure enough, six weeks from now, six months from now, six years from now, somebody's going to by phone, by letter, by personal contact, walk up to me and say, the things you shared that day got me thinking. And I started making some changes. And let me tell you what's happened to my business. Let me tell you what's happened to my sales career. Let me tell you what's happened to my relationship with my family. Family? See, that'll make it worth me. Not the money, the return. Something you can't buy with money. Write that down. It's necessary as you look at your goals and your dreams, it's necessary that you have a, a strategy and a game plan to change the story that you believe about yourself. And that's an ongoing process. I've discovered, and many people have, that what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. My favorite book says, Be ye not conform to this world, be ye transformed by by the renewing of your mind. And so as I began to work on myself, I realized that I'm getting out of one story and stepping into another story. As I become aware of some things, there's still some things I'm not aware of. So I still, I'm still growing, I'm still developing. I'm like the lady who said, Lord, I ain't what I wanna be, ain't what I'm gonna be, but thank God I showed what I was. But I realized that, that you have to work on yourself on a regular basis, and write this down, for mental mindset for mental mindset and stamina because things are going to happen to you i don't believe i believe that the reason that most people go to their graves with their talents and abilities and skills in them is because of the fact number one many are like me they didn't know that they didn't know and, and thought they knew i thought i knew myself and i really didn't know myself as well as i thought i've discovered that sometimes people can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself the other reason is i was afraid i never worked for a major corporation i wanted to speak for corporations. I was afraid I would I would be exposed because I don't have a college education. I felt inferior because of the fact that I don't have a college education. I allowed that level of fear of failure to stop me. And because I never had any experience in it, I assume that I could not do it. I was paralyzing myself by believing and assuming the limited part of myself as opposed to believing that I had something special. You have something special. There's something you want to do. Because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean that you can't learn. I, I like something that I heard. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Repeat after me, please. Leap and grow your wings on the way down.
What did I become? What, what changed with me where things changed? I want you to write this down. I read a book called Selling the Dream by a guy named Guy Kawasaki about that same time. Guy Kawasaki was the guy that sort of marketed Macintosh for Apple. Steve uh, Wozniak's become a pretty good buddy of mine because I had him come speak to my coaching group. So I'm very, very familiar with what made Apple work. Only the greatest company in the history of mankind, right? Or most influential anyway. I'm very familiar with what made that company work. And what made it work is they had unbelievable technical people, but they had a dude that led that company who was a crazy man, like I'm a crazy man, named Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs didn't have a high IQ. He wasn't an overly technical human being. He was an intense, psycho, crazy, and here's what he was great at doing. He was a great storyteller. If you're going to lead your company, if you're going to take it to the next level, you and your team had best be getting better at telling stories that move people. You're too much about the facts. You're too much about your script. You're too much about your presentation. You might even be too much about running numbers. you got to be able to tell a story that grips people emotionally, that shifts them to create a movement. Are you with me on that? Say yes. You're like, what's that got to do with roofing and all this other stuff? It has everything to do with it. Everything to do with it is a story you tell and how you frame things that gets me to not only participate, but close now and refer you to people. So you think, well, I don't, that doesn't matter. We're doing well. You can always do better at this. Wipe this down. The greatest leaders are evangelical about their cause. They are cause oriented leaders. They find a way to take an average ordinary product and somehow build a movement and a cause around it by becoming evangelical about their cause. Evangelical about the money your people might be able to make or evangelical about the difference you and your company make for family. To the extent you get good at becoming an evangelical leader is the extent that you'll be successful. I'll submit this to you because it's mainly men in here. To the extent that you'll be a great father, great leader of your home and your family is to the extent that you can become evangelical about the cause and the mission your family's on. I'm constantly telling my children, we're going to do something awesome. Our family's special. Since my son was a little boy, every night he go to bed, you're a leader, you're a gladiator, you're the greatest of all time, Max. We're going to do something great as a family. I tell my daughter that all the time, right? Why? No one told me that crap when I was growing up. I had an alcoholic dad. No one told me. I just hope he came home and didn't get mad. So are you evangelical about your life, about your cause, when people get around you? Maybe you're not loud. I'm not. Just so you know, when I walk off this stage, I'm the most introverted person in this room. Ask anybody who knows me. If I'm at a party, I don't talk. I'm quiet. If we were at the mall, brother, and we went to high school together, and I saw you, I'd love to connect, but I'm so quiet and introverted, I duck into a store to hide so we don't connect. But I had to learn to be a storyteller. I had to learn to transfer energy, to express myself. And I'm not capable of talking about crap I don't believe. I wasn't raised that way. But if you get me believing it, you get me talking about my faith, my family, any New England sports team, and my companies, I will move you. I will move you emotionally because I'm an evangelist about my cause. So what do those leaders have in common? If we go back, look at there. What does Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, my dumbass, Elon Musk, I use Rachel Hollis, and sweet Chris Jenner, who's my neighbor. Who? What do we all have in common? How about this group? Andy Frisella. I purposely put him next to Mother Teresa because I think that's hilarious, right? If you know Andy, he's my business partner in one of my companies. Mark Zuckerberg, and this ain't a political statement. I don't like anything Facebook does. I just have it there for that reason. MLK, who's my hero. Dwayne Johnson, not real happy with him lately either. And Martha Stewart. What do all those people have in common? In different ways, they become evangelical about their mission and their cause and their company. And that will be the separator for you. You want to build a great company, a great life, a great family, great wealth? I'm evangelical about all of it, all the time. That's a very specific word, by the way, evangelical. What do all they have in common? You got that. What's an evangelist do? A person who seeks to convert others, especially by public preaching, a zealous advocate of a cause. That's what an evangelist does. You must speak about these things, write about these things, post on your social media about it. When your people get around you, it's infectious and repetitive, and you don't tire of saying it over and over. I like when my guys roll their eyes at me. Here he goes again. This is the mission we're on. This is what we're going to do this year. And they're rolling their eyes, and I'm just putting it in their consciousness again and again and again because I'm relentless about it. Amen? Yes. Say yes. So why? Because our obsessions become our possession. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. And if you've been living like that, you have then restricted yourself to a commonality that is really not yours. Because what really God got for you is really in your imagination. Now since there's a lot of church folk in here, let me tie that to a script because this one you really start affect black folk. See, y'all don't really bleed nothing until you tie it to some type of church thing. So let, let's just go on and do that. And once again, before I start this, I am not a pastor or a preacher, and I can talk for a very small amount of time without cussing, so it's really... I know about the time limit. I'm going to try to end my speech before I hit that point because I want to stay dignified. This is about men of obey, so I'm going to stay dignified. There is a script that Albert Einstein took. It's like book C. C. Top selling motivation ever book. The seat if everything comes from Bible. You really don't, you don't need magic, power, positive, how's it how to roll it, when it's so I've read them all. All of that information is in profit, all of it. But let me give you this script. We've all heard, right? Faith 
the substance things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen.